What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who were purely in it for the money. Now, we've heard the reports and the rumors of certain wrestlers really just, they're not in the business for the love of the business. They're more so in the business because it pays the bills and they, they get some, some good cash out of it. And there are some people that are like that. You know, if they're still producing surprisingly good work, then all right, cool. But then there's some people that do the bare minimum and expect to get the big checks. So we're going to check out some of those individuals um, just that were in the business for the money. And that's about it. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one. The perks of becoming a top pro wrestler is the money. Top wrestlers and companies such as WWE, WCW, and even AEW have been known to make millions a year, and mm -hmm. the art of wrestling has led them to becoming rich beyond their wildest imaginations. Whilst money is a great reason to get into wrestling, sometimes the quest for riches overtakes the passion and love for wrestling itself. Mm -hmm. Over the years, wrestlers have been known to stick around in the world of wrestling, or even come out of retirement for the sole reason of making as much money as possible. Whilst this is understandable in some regard, some fans believe it to be disrespectful and question if a wrestler is fully invested in what- Oh, Rick. Oh, man. Now he's back with some more money in AEW. Jesus, man. What they are delivering inside the squared circle. So with that being said, let's look at 10 wrestlers who were purely in it for the money. Make sure y'all subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> of course. Of course, he has to be on the list. I'm surprised he's not number one on the list or higher up. Of course, Hulk Hogan. What are we talking about? Money? Sign me up, brother. <laughs> Hulk Hogan is one of the most controversial names in pro wrestling, and during his career, Hogan has been known to politic his way into a favorable position in whatever company he's been attached to. Hogan could have retired in the 1990s, but Hogan kept coming back for more runs in the likes of WCW, WWE, uh -huh. and TNA. Yep. Hogan has always put money first, and whilst for years, Hogan would act like he had a true love of wrestling, in a 2023 interview on the Full Send podcast, Hogan finally revealed that wrestling and his involvement in his chosen profession is all about the money. Everybody always says, oh, this business is a work. Okay, well, if I'm making twice as much money as you and you're wrestling me, is that a work? That's a fucking shoot, brother. And that's how I looked at it. This business was a shoot. It was the man that made the most money. So when I worked for Vince and Bob Backlund was the champion, I wrestled Backlund and Backlund always got paid more than me. Oh really? So this isn't a work. So it does matter if you win or lose. It does matter if you're the champion or not. Everybody goes, oh, it's a work. Well, it's not really a work. It's about the money and the mileage. <laughs> Number nine, the ultimate. That's a, that's a very interesting perspective. I mean, if you are the top champ, you should be getting paid some pretty good bucks. We know Roman's getting paid pretty bu good bucks and he don't have to be there that much. You know, that's just what it is. You feel me? You being the top champ, you're going to be the guy that's featured a lot. You're going to be the guy that does the interviews with the championship. People are going to want to see you. Like, if you bring it in the money, you get the top money. So, Warrior. When the Ultimate Warrior became a household name in WWE, he quickly realized that he was on the brink of becoming a rather rich individual. Uh -huh. Warrior's entire WWE run, particularly during his run as a main eventer, was solely motivated by the dollar sign. Warrior would go to questionable lengths to make as much money as possible in WWE, and Warrior would infamously hold up Vince McMahon for yep. money in the early 1990s. Yep. Warrior would eventually sign for WCW in 1998, and whilst WCW paid a ludicrous amount to attain Warrior, with reports suggesting it was anywhere between $500,000 to $1 million, Ooh. WCW unfortunately didn't reap the rewards. Nope. Warrior brought nothing but problems wherever he went, and whilst his star power can't be diminished, it's hard to see past Warrior's money-oriented mindset. Number 8. Sid Sid found success wherever he went as he was awarded world titles in both WWE and WCW. Mm -hmm. Sid was a solid big man, and he was able to have notable bah! feuds with the likes of Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and even Kevin Nash. While Sid always seemed to put his all into his work, he has admitted that he was mainly driven by the money involved in pro wrestling. During a candid interview with Sean Mooney, the former world champion declared that he never had a true love for the pro wrestling business. Damn. My wife was pregnant, and it sounded like I could get into that, making money a little bit faster, and that's mm. exactly how it happened. 
I don't have the story like a lot of the guys do. I never had the love for the business. It was really just to make money. Nope. And I mean, hey, like I said, I some people are just in it for the for the paycheck and they still put on pretty good matches, have pretty good views. They may not even care for the business like that. It's the, to them, it's just a job. It's a job that's paying real well. So I, I can't fault you for it. I don't feel like everybody that comes into the business have to love it, but I do feel like you need to at least have some type of respect for it. Number seven, Daniel Pewter. Daniel Pewter was a wrestler who grossly overestimated his value. Pewter was one of the winners of Tough Enough, and he was mostly known for almost submitting Kurt Angle on SmackDown. Uh -huh. Pewter believed that he was an absolute megastar in WWE, and he believed he was worth a ton of money to the company. Kurt Angle would go into detail in relation to Pewter's monetary-driven attitude on his podcast, and this is what the WWE Hall of Famer had to say. Daniel didn't work out, and they ended up letting him go, and the thing is, they did offer him another deal, but this son of a said, I want more money. Okay, he didn't even do anything in WWE yet, yeah. and here he is demanding more money. So they said, okay, we're going to turn you down. And unfortunately, I think Daniel Pewter would have had a pretty decent career if he would have been cool about everything. Mm -hmm. But I think because he wasn't, his career ended very quickly, and it's unfortunate because he was a talented kid. Yep, and that's, you got too greedy too fast. The thing about WWE and a lot of these companies, if you're trying to get the most money possible, you got to work with what they give you and work your way up. Doesn't matter if you're legit, doesn't matter your back background or accolades, you have to work yourself up and they will pay you what they feel like they're, you're worth to them at that moment. Once you start really making a name for yourself, once people start buying into you, once people start buying the merch and wanting to see you on their television and they're going crazy for you when your music hit, then you can have that leverage like, hey, I'm bringing in some extra dollars for y'all. What's up? But you haven't even gotten to that point, man. Take what they give you and then you can go from there. But number six, Batista. It's not uncommon for a wrestler to get into wrestling for the sole reason of making money. Uh -huh. But over time, they can develop a love for the squared circle. For sure. This was most definitely the case with Batista, as when he signed with WWE, he had no passion for wrestling. Yet eventually, the animal became one of the most dedicated stars in the history of WWE. Uh -huh. Batista has even admitted this himself during an interview with Live with Kelly and Ryan. I actually wasn't into wrestling at first. I actually got into it because I was broke and was looking for a way to make money. Which and so I went to a tryout and they told me that I was horrible and to leave and never come <laughs> back and I'd never be a professional wrestler. I needed that. That just made me mad. So it made me want to pursue it and then I just became obsessed with it. Number And five. that's cool. That's there's nothing wrong with that. He initially was just trying to make some bucks and said, You're terrible. Get the hell up out of here. You'll never be a wrestler. And he took it personally. And then he decided to say, you know what? Just because they told me I couldn't do it, watch me fucking do it. And there you go. He's one of the biggest stars, one of the biggest movie stars, too, of all time. And him pursuing that, even when they told him no, opened up other doors. Because if he would have just gave up and did something else, we may not have the movie star that we have now. So. Five, China. China was one of the most successful and popular female talents ever. China was often found wrestling men, and she was even a former Intercontinental Champion. Mm -hmm. According to Jim Ross on his Grilling JR podcast, China's quest for more money seemed to overstep the mark yep. as she wanted a million dollar guarantee. Mm -hmm. She wanted a million dollar guarantee because she felt she was worth more being a female, being even more unique than Stone Cold and some of the other guys. There were only a handful of guys making a million dollars a year. He said that although he wanted to resign her, the guarantee she was asking for was too big. Mm -hmm. I said, Vince, if I can't get a decent number, we may have to pass on it. He said, well, that's your call. I couldn't give her a million dollars a year. Could she have earned over a million dollars per year? She probably did a couple of times, if I remember correctly. But that guarantee was just too big. Mm, and that was the guarantee she was looking for. And it's like, uh, I can't guarantee y'all, guarantee you that. And a, a million dollars back then per year was definitely a lot. It, you know, what it is now with inflation and stuff like that. It's, that was definitely a lot of money back then in that time when she initially asked for it still. so Number four, Kevin Nash. One of the most respectable things about Kevin Nash is how he's never shied away from how he views wrestling. <laughs> Nash has admitted time and time again that for him, wrestling is all about the money. And whilst this may rub some fans the wrong way, you have to appreciate that Nash never hides his true intention. 
Nash jumped ship to WCW in 1996, mm -hmm. and this was where his focus and motivation for more and more money began. Every decision following signing for WCW revolved around money, and mm -hmm. even though Nash was no doubt only bothered by the dollar sign, this didn't negate his performances, yeah. as for the most part, Nash delivered everything he was asked to do to a high standard. And there's nothing Number wrong with three, that. Number three, Bret Hart. Bret Hart is widely regarded as one of the best wrestlers of all time, but even someone with complete love and passion for pro wrestling mm -hmm. sometimes has to focus on the money. Yep. This was the case when Hart left WWE in 1997. Hart was offered a reported three-year deal by WCW that was said to be worth $9 million. Ooh. When compared to WCW, WWE's business wasn't that great in late 1997, so WWE simply couldn't match WCW's yeah, they offer. Match it. It's worth noting that this was a decision in which Hart would ultimately regret. I wish I never left for WCW because I probably wouldn't have had a stroke and I probably wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have had to wrestle Bill Goldberg. Damn. Damn, it. there may be some truth to that, man. As the wrestling legend has spoken out in relation to how he wishes he never joined WCW. Damn. Number two, Ric Flair. Oh, we are, oh, yeah. It's well established just how problematic Ric Flair has been with his own personal wealth. Flair wanted to live the lavish lifestyle, uh -huh. and pro wrestling was his outlet of obtaining everything he ever wanted. Flair always followed the money, and the most infamous time Flair did this was back in 2010. In 2008, Flair had retired from pro wrestling in an acclaimed match against Shawn Michaels at Classic match. This should have been an end. This should have been... I watched this match live. This was great. Great way to end off his career. The, the camera pan in to Shawn Michaels, HBK, saying, I love you before the sweet chin music was fantastic. And he couldn't let it go. <laughs> WrestleMania 24. However, Flair needed more money, Hold so on. he made the contract. Flair did this was back in 2010. In 2008, Flair had retired from pro wrestling in an acclaimed match against Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 24. However, Flair needed more money, so he made the controversial call to sign with TNA. Mm -hmm. During an appearance on Broken Skull Sessions, Flair discussed his monetary motivation for signing with the company. I needed the money and I had fun. Easy. I got there at 3 o'clock and I was back at the hotel and the bar by 7. I needed the money and that's all there was. I apologized to Vince profusely for even doing it, but I needed the money and I had a good time with the guys. I didn't have to do anything and I liked Bruce Pritchard too. Uh. Number one, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> one of the criticisms that is often aimed towards Brock Lesnar is that he has no love for WWE. In the minds of some fans, Lesnar only cares about his paycheck and he no longer cares about his in-ring work. Whilst it's no doubt true that Lester is prone to chasing the bag, and his mm -hmm. contract negotiations usually come down to making as few appearances as possible yeah. for the highest possible cost, this doesn't mean that Lesnar doesn't care. Yeah. Even if Lesnar is driven by money, he still cares a great deal about his work, his presentation, and who he works with. Mm -hmm. Lesnar clapped back at critics who questioned his passion during a 2022 interview with Newsday, and this is what the multi-time WWE champion had to say. I put on some great matches in my day, mm -hmm. and you don't do that without having a passion for the squared circle. I'm a man that for the last 25 years of my life just wanted to be left alone. I didn't prostitute myself and put myself out there to be vulnerable to the media and be vulnerable to the next person that wanted to stick their claws into me. I just found out that it was easier for me to go and recharge my batteries and go be who I really wanted to be and hide that from the world. It's just who I am. I'm a private person. I approach my life and fighting and wrestling like this is a job. It's a career. I'm a prize fighter. Mm -hmm. I get into the octagon or the ring. I do my business and I do it well and I get paid for it. And so I'm very passionate about the business. But that was my character. For a long time, I had Paul Heyman speaking on my behalf. I didn't have to participate on the microphone. Mm -hmm. I was just a demolition man. I think people, if they could see through all of it, would understand that I've had some really great matches in my career with for a lot sure. of different people. You don't go to work and put out a product like that if you don't have passion for it. This is true. And that was the criticism that Brock was getting for a, lot, a while. I know some of you are, oh my God, you're praising Brock Lesnar. I can be I can be unbiased in this situation and appreciate what he has done when it comes to the matches he has put on. Let's not forget, this nigga legitimately ran into a turnbuckle at uh, this year's Backlash uh his match he had with cody he legit did that that wasn't a blade job either he legit ran his head into the turnbuckle to make it bloodier to sell the the 
the seriousness of the match between him and Cody. And that made that match even more intense because it's like, damn, you rarely see blood like that. He legit did that. He didn't blade. He legit ran his head into the top turnbuckle. A deep gash to sell a match, to make a feud. You don't do that if you don't have some type of love for the business. And we've seen it. Guys that he want to work with, he puts on good matches. Guys that he doesn't really care for, it's whatever. You know? So, him getting paid the top dollars, he's still a top draw. So, I understand it. So, I, I've we've heard the criticism. He's only in it for the money. But at the same time, when he shows up, he, he's, he does what he's supposed to do. So, I can give him respect on that note. He's one of the few people that... <laughs> When you ask him to bleed, guess what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it the legit way and give myself a concussion just because I want to sell this match and make this match that more memorable. But comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers you feel like should have been on this list that were in the business for the money if they weren't listed here already. But I appreciate all the love and support. Guys, it's Sean on the channel. Roads on him 50k and I'm still young speedy YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.